Hello and welcome to Northam Marine Water Scientific Services. This is the seventh in our series of short videos designed to provide you with guidance on good sampling technique. In this video we're going to explore the recommended techniques to employ when sampling potable water samples for microbiological determinants. In this video we may make reference to other videos in the series and when we do this we'll ensure that links to the reference videos are available at the foot of the playing window. In this video we have two specific learning objectives that we'd like you to achieve. Firstly, we'd like to familiarise you with each individual step of the recommended microbiological sampling technique. Secondly, we'd like you to be aware of the common technique errors that may affect the quality of your samples. The techniques that we'll demonstrate are compliant with DWI and MODW guidance. They are the same techniques that our own samplers use when sampling potable waters to monitor our regulatory compliance. The aim of sampling is to take a representative volume of water into an appropriate vessel and to transport it to the laboratory in a way that limits any changes that might occur before it is analysed. To achieve this there are a series of recommended steps that should be followed. Firstly, you'll need to ensure that you take your samples in the correct order. We've previously explored how important this is in video number 2, which is dedicated to the order of sampling. Before proceeding with microbiological sampling, you need to have completed all required chemistry sampling and to have thoroughly disinfected the sampling tap. Chemistry sampling is covered in video number 5, and tap disinfection techniques are covered in video number 6. Once chemistry sampling and tap disinfection are complete, you should next double check your sampler's work list to determine which microbiological determinants are required and which bottles you will need to fill. At this stage it's also prudent to double check the bottle filling instructions supplied by a laboratory. Before taking any microbiological samples you should thoroughly clean your hands with antimicrobial hand cleaner. You can then take the bottle supplied by your laboratory and confirm that it has been clearly labelled with the correct sample details. These details should match the details that you've entered onto the sample submission sheet that will accompany the bottles to the laboratory. You should also check that the bottle's security seal is intact and that the bottle has not exceeded its expiry date. Having followed the advice in video number 4 on selecting suitable sampling taps, you will already have removed any tap attachments and any removable tap inserts. Once you're ready to sample, you should turn on the tap and adjust the flow of water to a steady, gentle flow. Holding the bottle by its base, remove the top and hold the top in an upright position with its opening facing downwards. Fill the bottle to approximately 1cm below the base of the neck, ensuring that a suitable air gap remains. You can then carefully replace the cap. There are several technique errors that you should guard against. Always hold the bottle cap with its opening facing downwards, never upwards. This minimises the risk of dust particles and other contaminants from settling into the inside of the cap. Nor should you set the cap aside on the worktop, because this is highly likely to contaminate the sample. You should also take care to avoid the inside of the cap becoming contaminated by splashes or accidental handling, and you should ensure that no contact is made between the tap and the neck of the sampling bottle. If you make any of these errors, you should discard the sample and then resample into a clean bottle. When taking your samples, it's important that the flow of water from the tap is maintained at a steady, gentle flow rate. Significant changes in flow rates are problematic because they can dislodge materials from inside the pipework, which can then potentially contaminate your sample. For the same reason, if the tap being sampled is a swivel tap, it should not be moved once the flow rate has been set. Again, if you make any of these errors, you should discard the sample and then resample into a clean bottle. Finally, it's important that you don't overfill the bottle, because microbiology sample bottles are predosed with a chlorine quenching agent such as sodium thiosulfate. The amount of thiosulfate in the bottle is sufficient to quench the chlorine concentrations typically found in potable waters. If you make an error and overfill the bottle, that sampled bottle should be discarded and the sample retaken into a fresh bottle, this time ensuring that you do not overfill. In summary, you should avoid the following microbiological sampling technique errors. Upward facing caps. Caps placed on worktops. Handling contact to the interior of the cap or to the neck of the sampling bottle. Contact between the neck of the sampling bottle and the tap. Changing flow rate during sampling. Moving swivel taps during sampling. 
and overfilling bottles. Avoiding all of these technique errors, repeat the sampling process until all microbiological samples required at that tap have been taken. Before leaving the customer's property, check that you've rinsed all residual disinfection solution from the outside of the tap and that you've thoroughly cleaned up any spillages. This brings us to the end of this video. As promised, we've explored each individual step of the recommended microbiological sampling technique. We've also highlighted common technique errors that can affect the quality of your samples. After sampling, care must be taken to store and transport the samples under conditions that safeguard their integrity while they're en route to the laboratory. This will be explored in our next video, video number eight, which focuses on sample storage and transportation.